All right, so do this now. It's in a sphere of mass m and radius r. Okay, sphere of mass m and radius r. This angle of inclination is theta. From center, the height of the ground is h. Okay. All right. So it's a e? solid sphere, right? Ah, solid. Ha, solid. When, when when it is not mentioned, what is it? You have to assume it is a solid one. When it comes down, we have to find it. Find out the angular velocity. What is the angular velocity omega when it comes? down there is friction sufficient for the pure rolling friction is sufficient so that pure rolling happens all right there is no slipping so the incline plane doesn't shift you want to shift it no. No. not right now incline plane is at rest okay. moment of inertia about the center of mass for a sphere is 2 by 5 mr square better way was how you got all of it done yes. is friction doing any work yes yeah. friction is doing some work how many say yes Actually, no, but it's <coughs> Somebody <laughs> asked me doubt in the group, right? Is friction do you yeah. asked? What did I say? Sir, I asked, yeah, friction won't do any work. In pure rolling case, friction doesn't do any work. Okay? Please write it down in box. If it is pure rolling, there is no slipping between the two surfaces, right? Relatively, they are not moving. So work done by the friction is zero, but that doesn't mean that friction doesn't apply force. Force is there to create acceleration and angular acceleration, but that doesn't do any work. What did you do? You got the acceleration. I see. I want you to apply work energy theorem. All right. You can solve it using torque equation also, but I want you to use work energy theorem. I want to see that. So if we assume the bottom to be zero potential, and potential at the top would be h plus r, right? That's what I took it as. Did this from center? Yeah, so the h plus r. No, 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 it's just h to the center. So you only need h plus r. Yeah, but but in the end it's r. All right, so almost all of you did not get it. The final potential g is not zero. It is mg h minus r. Yeah. Center of mass is at height r above. Yes or no? Okay. So W is equal to U2 plus K2. This is the expression. All right. W is zero. U2 is what? MGR plus K2 is what? K2 is half m v c m square plus half i omega square minus m g h plus zero. Did you get this? Yes. And since it is pure rolling, omega is equal to VCM by R. Pure rolling on a fixed surface, that is why. Alright, so when you substitute VCM is equal to omega R, now you can solve it to get the value of omega when it comes down the incline. So if okay. the thing itself is moving, then even we are going to slipping. do that after we learn angular momentum and momentum. Okay? Because then you have to apply conversion of momentum. So, but in that case, VCM, even if there is no slipping, VCM will be different from omega, right? Yes. 
at the point of contact, the velocity of the object will be equal to the velocity of the surface. Yes. Okay. Both tangential direction as well as radial direction. Guys, focus here. This one. It's a disc. Disc banao bhai. It's a disc mass M and radius R. And this is a horizontal line. Which is at a distance of R by 2 below the center. Got it? So if you drop a perpendicular from here on this chord, this distance is R by 2. Getting it? This entire disc can rotate about this horizontal line. Are you getting it? So it is like this. That suppose this is a disc, it can rotate like this. Are you getting it? It can rotate like this. Okay, I know. So it is like this. This can rotate about the horizontal axis. Are you getting it? Understood? Are we on me? Here are this. Fine. So it can flip over like that. So when it flips over, how it looks like? It looks like this. Getting it? You have to listen here, listen, listen. This disc is free to rotate about this axis. You you have nursed it a bit and it started ro uh, rotating, you have to find out its angular velocity when it has flipped over completely. Understood? So, so it's horizontal and gravity makes it go through. Huh. No, it's it's M R square by four plus M R square by four. Yeah. Same thing It's just you just yeah. take the. So is it the answer? I don't remember the answer. <laughs> but I do remember this came in J 1998. This is easy. Advance means. Yo, this took us like a minute. Yeah, See, it is supposed supposed to be a very tricky question. But I am telling you now. You've got it. You can't be J. You can't be J. Advanced. Yeah, advanced. 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 All right. Somebody is teaching so well. <laughs> I get all the credit. All right. So, focus here. Center of mass was here earlier. Now it has gone there from point 1 to point 2. I have to apply the conservation of potential energy, sorry, conservation of mechanical energy between 1 and 2. Alright? The same thing, W is equal to U2 plus K2 minus U1 plus K1. You can assume point number 2 to be 0 potential energy. So U2 becomes 0, U1 will be mg, this distance is r by 2 plus r by 2, r. So mg, r, okay? k1 is 0. Whereas k2 is half moment of inertia about the fixed axis into omega square. This is your k2. How do you find moment of inertia about this axis? I have to apply parallel axis theorem. And perpendicular axis theorem. Right. So about this axis, I know it is mr square by 2. So about this will be mr square, MR square by 4. So mr square by 4 is your ICM, which is parallel to that axis. You have to shift it. m into d square, which is m into r by 2 whole square. So this will be equal to. Okay. 
like this. Understood? Fine. Any doubts? Got out? Find out the total force the axis applies on the disc at this moment when it is at point 2. So the what? Total force the axis applies on the disc when the disc is at point 2. So here we have to use torque. You have to use whatever. How much omega comes by the way? Under root 4G by L. 4G by R. 4G by R. How much alpha you are getting? Alpha is equal to? Hmm? Alpha about that axis is how much? Anybody got alpha? So I got the force really. Alpha, alpha. First tell me alpha. How much is alpha? It's, isn't it zero? Alpha is zero? Yes. Right. The only force is mg that passes through the axis, touches the axis, so perpendicular distance is zero. Okay, so torque due to mg is zero, so alpha is zero. So there is no tangential acceleration. But is there a radial acceleration? Yeah. Which direction? Uh, yeah, it, like, yeah. No, it's... it's no, it's... Uh, it's towards the axis, from radius towards the axis. It is like this. <coughs> How much is this acceleration? Omega square? R by 4. Omega square? R by 2. R by 2. It's perpendicular. The center is moving at a radius of R by 2. You have to see center's motion only. So that one is 2 m. So omega square R by 2. R is 1 by Cutting it. All of you? Yes. Stop talking. Stop talking. So there will be a force from the axis in this direction. Let's say that force is N. And there will be a force in downward direction which will be Mg. So net force is N minus Mg. This should be equal to mass time acceleration which is omega square R by 2. Is so you get N? Yeah, Mg plus 2 Mg. Yeah. Omega square R by 2 is how much? 2 Mg. 3 Mg. Yeah. So the M omega, omega square R by 2 is how much I am asking? 2, 2, 2 Mg. 2, G. 2 Mg? So this is 3 Mg. So the axis applies a force of 3 Mg at this moment. Clear? Okay. Shall I proceed? Thank you. Write down angular momentum. We discussed impulse in which chapter? Work Collisions came in work by energy, right? So angular momentum and angular impulse both will do together. Okay. You remember linear momentum? What is linear momentum? Margin to velocity is the uh, quantity. Okay, it is a mathematical expression for linear momentum. What it is? Momentum is what? Force is effort? Amount of motion. Amount of motion is linear momentum. Okay? What is what do you think angular momentum is? Amount of angular. Yeah, amount of rotation. Amount of <laughs> angular motion. Linear momentum is amount of linear motion. And angular momentum is amount of angular, angular motion. Simple, all right? So if if an object is going in a straight line, does it have any angular momentum? No. 
Does it have or not? No? Okay, consider this scenario. I have asked you so many trick questions. Every time I ask something like, oh, this might be something. All right, so here is Param. Right in the, on the cliff. <laughs> right. This is Ruchir trying to save Param. Thank you. So which one? Master. So Param first checks what is the depth of this by dropping a ball. He's trying to see how far it is. Now, when Param is seeing it from here, he is looking it straight like that. But Ruchir doesn't. Act, Ruchir was not actually caring for Param. He was actually caring for ball. So he's looking at the. <laughs> So he's looking at the uh, ball which he has dropped. So every time he looks at it, he has to turn his head. Right? So is there an angular velocity for the ball for the ruchir? Yes. But not for the param? Yes or no? So ruchir will say that it has angular momentum as well as linear momentum. Param will say no. Fine? So, just like torque, even angular momentum depends on about which axis you are looking at it. Fine? Now, we have to quantify it. Alright? So, quantification should be in such a way that uh, if, if the distance, if the perpendicular distance, let us say uh, this is the perpendicular distance and let's say this is the velocity. Okay? If this perpendicular distance becomes zero, the angular momentum should become zero. zero. <laughs> yes or no? And if this velocity increases, the angular momentum also increases, the, the theta changes quickly. Right? So, the angular momentum is basically perpendicular distance into mass time velocity. Alright? We are not getting too much of detail into it. We are directly writing the expression. This is the angular momentum of a point object. Fine? Please write down in bracket for the point of mass. So perpendicular distance from the axis dragon. Yes. From wherever you want to, whenever somebody asks you to find a torque, what you should ask back? About which axis? So whenever I am asking you find the angular momentum, you should ask me back about which axis or point you are asking the angular momentum. Simple. Fine. So angular momentum about an axis which is perpendicular distance r from what? from the line of velocity is r perpendicular into m into v. So just like torque, even angular momentum can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Right now it is in which direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise? It's clockwise. Clockwise. So it is, the angle is increasing like this. So it is trying to rotate like that. So it is clockwise. Okay. In a vector notation form, Angular momentum is written as R cross P. P is a linear momentum. Fine. Any doubts? This is the angular momentum of the point mass. Let us now try to find out the angular momentum of a rigid body. This is very clear, right? By the way, one more thing. Angular momentum is magnitude of angular momentum is R perpendicular mass into velocity. Magnitude of velocity. So dl by dt is what R perpendicular is, let's say, constant. This will be m into dv by dt. Magnitude of velocity will change only because of the tangential acceleration. So this will be R perpendicular into mass into tangential acceleration. Yes or no? So mass into tangential acceleration is what? Tangential force. R perpendicular into tangential force is what? It's a torque. It is torque. Fine. So rate at which the angular momentum changes for a point mass is equal to torque about that axis. 
So, so if you have like that case that we had before, mm -hmm. you just had something like let's say I had something moving with a uh, fixed velocity mm -hmm. about some axis, then it, there will be a change in angular momentum. Oh. So there'll be a torque on it oh. across that axis. Yes. But there's no external force on it. How can you say there is no external force? So like I, I just have some line. I, oh. I, I have an axis like this. You have some object going like this. Yes. So this is the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is fixed? No, no, sir. It, it, it's a it's an axis in the z dimension. And this, this is like this, no? This is your axis. No, sir. Like it, it's not in the same dimension. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sir. This is your axis. Yes. Okay? Yeah. This is your line of velocity. Yeah. Alright? Your perpendicular distance is not changing. Your linear momentum is also not changing. So your angular momentum is also constant. It is not changing. So there is no torque. Okay? Perpendicular distance is fixed now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Alright? Yeah. So angular momentum is there, but it is constant. Alright, please write down. Wait, sir. If I'm standing somewhere, I look at someone in front of me kick a football. Mm. I have to turn my head to see the football go. Mm. So it has angular momentum. But there's no external force after he kicks it, right? Yeah, no external force. Mm. Angular momentum, it is like momentum can be there if velocity of object is there. But force will be there only when momentum changes. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Okay? Angular momentum can be there. But only when angular momentum changes, you can claim that there is a torque. Fine. Should change with time. So if R changes then? Huh? If R changes because the, like someone's going in a Then also it, there can be momentum. There can be, sorry, torque. Okay. If perpendicular distance itself changes, it means, you know, it is not going in a straight line. Okay. 